Hey there guys, hope you're doing well. I, uh, I've been asked by a few people to show a tutorial on how I go about stacking in Astro Pixel Processor and I'm also going to include it for this tutorial, a, a mosaic stack. So, let's just dive straight into it. Why not? It's going to be loosey-goosey and it is what it is, but hopefully it'll help some people out there. Now, you've first met with the splash screen like this where you can choose your working directory simply by clicking this. It will also prompt you. If you haven't got one already set but in my case i'm just going to use app tutorial right here you can point this to where all your data is instead it will ask you if you're doing multi-channel and filter processing i'm not multi-session processing i'm not uh, an auto detection of masters and integrations i don't need that either right now so it's going to ask for a name of what we're stacking so in this case it's going to be the lobster claw Nebula. Um, now you can see we've got the option here for clicking these little boxes and loading in our frames. So I'm going to do that straight away. Hit light and navigate over to where my frames are. So they're on the one terabyte drive, Artemis, lights. And if I just click one of them, hit control and A, that's everything selected as you can see. Go ahead and hit open. Make sure you haven't opened thumbnails and things like that as that could throw things off slightly. My flats now, I'm going to do the same kind of thing, so just navigate to wherever my flats are. Control and A, get all of those opened. My darks, same sort of thing. And in this case, because I'm using a IMX294, the Artemis C Pro, I need to use dark flats, so I will use those rather than opening them in the bias. Uh, if you had the normal standard bias frames that you needed to use, you'd just click it in there and leave dark flats uh, on selected instead now you've got multiple options on here i really have never honestly needed to use them very much but you can sort your frames out on this from uh, best to worst or worst to best um but anyway i used to think <laughs> i will go through this because this is a mistake that i made early on i used to think that when you start with app you need to go through each and every single one of these tabs one two three four five until eventually you got to integrate tab right here on number six and that's not true if all you want is a very simple integration uh just like all defaults kind of thing just jump straight from loading your frames in over to integrate scroll down and hit integrate quite literally and it will tell you if you're missing any settings that you really obviously need for the type of image that you've got but as this is a little bit of a tutorial um i will just take you through what each of these tabs looks like and point out anything that i've actually had to use myself so to be honest i haven't had to use any of these really in the uh, calibration window now analyze stars i have sometimes had to mess with this ever so slightly if you notice that once you've stacked an image it's not been quite perfectly accurate with its alignments uh you can really sort that out generally speaking it's from using too many stars so i sometimes drop this right down to 100 stars uh, and you can also use the cosmic ray and noise reducer so it should noise reduce the images uh, before figuring out the star positions effectively so it doesn't get confused with noise patterns um, between your frames or any correlating noise from hot pixels and things like that and stacking on those instead which can happen but it doesn't if you take that that's one saying that i have used um, over on the registration tab now number four Again, I really haven't needed to mess with much of this except for if I'm doing a mosaic uh, in this case, which I am. So not, sometimes if you're doing a mosaic with different um, gear or maybe you and a friend have compiled data together, you might need to untick same camera and optics. I will probably need to use dynamic distortion correction, but I'm going to do a little bit to leave it unticked for now because I'm going to show you the fact that it can prompt you to select things at the end right as you're about to hit stack uh, it's a good time saving feature i have noticed rather than going through each one of these and selecting them just let it prompt you at the end now registration mode in my case if you're just doing a normal integration just don't touch this just leave it on normal um i will be doing a mosaic integration for this so i'll go ahead and tick that um and that is about it for number four. So over on the normalization page, generally speaking, always leave that unticked. You want it to perform normalization of your light frames. Um, 
I haven't really needed to mess with anything else on there. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, why, uh, why muddy the waters? And now on the, the the tab where the magic really happens over on integrate. Um, if you were stacking, let's say, multiple different filters, LRGB data, that kind of thing, or SHO or whatever, you'd have the option here to integrate per channel, integrate all, or integrate per channel and all. So it'll do both and save you everything out individually. That's usually the way I that I go uh for things because then you've got the option for everything it leaves you uh, you know all your bases covered and multi-session options so you can integrate per session or integrate all your sessions together uh or do both so those are your options as i unticked those on the first page if i just show you real quick those two options right there they are grayed out for me over on integrate um you can select the amount of lights that you want to stack over here so Let's say you want to be quite selective and go with just 84% or whatever. Of the amount of data that you captured, you can do that just by selecting over there. But if you've already gone through your frames, you know that everything's good. No reason you can't just leave that up to max. Okay, no harm done. Now the type of integration, it'll come on as automatic. Generally speaking, just leave it on automatic. If you really need to change it, it you tend to probably just be changing it to averaging. Uh, in my experience, now you'll notice local normalization rejection is currently unticked. Um, you are going to want that. So if I just uh, select this as average right now, uh, and you notice this is now ungrade this option for me, so I can now select. Oftentimes it will Windsorized. Uh, I tend to go with adaptive though, if I've got quite a few frames to stack. That seems to work better. It uses a combination of Sigma, Windsorized, and MAD. Um, and then at that point, you tick Local Normalization Rejection. And that will then apply that when it's integrating. The composition of the frames, this is what your output's going to look like. So I usually just leave it on full. I'm going to be real with you, but you could just have it just on the reference image. So, uh, or you could just have it on the crop of the kind of intersection of all of the light frames. I just go with full because I'm going to crop it myself afterwards. Now, local normalization correction is another thing that's automatically turned off. But in many cases, I do run it just on a first degree. And especially, you really do need to run it if you're stacking a mosaic. Sometimes you'll need a little bit stronger too. So maybe a second degree or whatever. And the amount of iterations, I often just leave as is. At three, multi band blending. So uh, at the edges, of your image where you perhaps got fewer and fewer frames, let's say overlapping, uh, and it starts to get a bit noisy towards those edges, you can smooth things out and end up with a, if it's a slightly larger, safer, croppable area, if you just enable multi-band blending, I will take that. You can also get it to generate you output maps once it's finished stacking. I've never needed them to be quite honest with you. And uh, here we are, we've got options for drizzle integration right here. So uh, it works a little bit different to something like Deep Sky Stacker where you just tell it, do a two times drizzle and it'll take care of it for you. You instead can set the droplet size on this. So a smaller droplet is going to give a sharper but noisier result. And it goes in reverse. Also, if you go with bigger droplets, it will be less sharp, less noisy, <laughs> basically. Um, but... I think one of these drop downs, uh, if you just kind of mouse over them, it does give you a brief description uh, of each and every tool in here. So if you've got a lot of time, you could go ahead and read all of those. But um, as far as I remember, if you just want the approximation of a two times drizzle, you'd go with a 0 0.5 times drop and a two times scale. I'm sure it says that on one of the drop down kind of information boxes on this thing. But that's not actually what I usually run with. Normally, I'll either run with base, uh, so both set to one, droplet and scale. Or if I want a very slight drizzle, a very slight sharpening um, without introducing too much noise to your image, uh, I'll go with something like a 0.85 droplet and maybe about a 1.2, 1.3 scale. And that's more than enough. Now, I did leave some settings deliberately, if I could speak, deliberately unticked because I wanted to show you the power of this tool. So hopefully it doesn't trip me up here and <laughs> go ahead and stack without showing me. But 
Sure enough. Uh, so he's asking me if I want to disable same camera and optics because I've told him I'm doing a mosaic. I don't because it all was taken with the same camera and optics. Um, increase the scale stop. This is something else you can really mess around with if you wish. 10% is my panel overlap, so 10% is probably going to be a, just about fine. So I will allow it to change that up to 10% with yes uh, and dynamic distortion correction, almost all mosaics because it knows I selected to do a mosaic. You'll need this to be able to get accurate registration. Yes, do let it do it. So as we said, uh, it will actually go ahead and take care of all of that for you. It's quite cool. Now I'm going to if you'll forgive me. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I've already gone ahead and stacked this to save me a bunch of time. Uh, even with a 24 thread CPU, uh, it takes a while to do a mosaic, especially with uh, a few passes of LNC. So once it had actually finished stacking for you guys, you'd be left with something like this. All right, looks reasonable. Now you may notice sometimes you're, it takes a little bit of a while to load up and that's because I've left it on CPU based rendering for this window right here if you have a graphics card though you're probably gonna have a lot snappier performance snappier performance with OpenGL based rendering as you can see there's no lag whatsoever now so that's what we've got you can see there's some slight kind of miss um alignments along the edge where the mosaic panels didn't perfectly line up when we took them uh, based on the two sessions so I'm going to open up the tools window and I'm going to crop to begin with. So yes, I do want to crop the image in the window, get the whole image visible, and then you can scroll in and out to alter the level of zoom that you need for this operation. And just by holding onto the left mouse button, dragging a green box over the area that you actually want to crop, and then hitting crop, you can go ahead and save that. I did go through this once before, so... Uh, Let's go ahead and find this for you now. That's what we've got right now. So you can see between the two panels, this was a, uh, a top and bottom mosaic. You can see a bit of a difference between the background values. So this top panel was taken with no moon. This bottom panel was taken with about 50% moon or something like that. So you can see the background is quite a lot brighter, separated by this almost line here and also across the whole image. Here's a bit of a gradient going from darker in this top left corner to brighter in this bottom right. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Astro Pixel Process, one of its key features that I absolutely love it for is this tool right here, Remove Light Pollution. It's like Pixie Sight's DBE tool, if you like, uh, on steroids. It just seems to work so much better. So what you basically do is using your left mouse button, just like we drew that kind of crop window, you're going to want to select all the areas of background that you can so that it can generate a robust map uh, of the background that it should be extracting effectively from this image. So you, what you don't want to be doing is selecting bright areas of nebula or particularly bright stars with little boxes and things like that. Try to avoid that kind of thing if you can. Uh, getting little bits of nebula is fine uh, as it should all be averaged out anyway uh, in the in the end, as long as you put enough samples for areas where you, you know, it's complex, the gradient, like between these two uh, seams right here, more samples can be a good thing uh, and end up smoothing things out. But for areas where it's just kind of devoid of much going on, don't be afraid to use bigger boxes and save yourself some time. Selecting all of these, um, obviously, if I wasn't waffling on and on and on and on, and on. I'd be done with this by now, uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys roughly how this kind of operation looks. Now, that seems pretty good to me. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead with that. So I'm going to hit recalculate. Let this process for just a moment. <clears throat> As you can see, it was maybe not too happy with some of the sample boxes, those the, the red ones and the yellow ones, you could remove those if you wished. Try again, but honestly to me, it looks absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK and save. And there you have it, 
an image ready for exporting over now into PixInsight. And to be honest, after really getting to know uh, the Remove Light Pollution tool, in this program, uh, you can get rid of a whole lot of weird gradients. Um, it's extremely powerful, as you can see, all evidence, really, of that seam between the mosaic panels. And that, that's a pretty challenging gradient to get rid of because it was like a straight line. Nothing natural about it. Um, and yeah, it's gone, right? So I think it works a lot better than uh, DBE does in PixInsight. And it's... Uh, a bit more intuitive to use as well, I think. And uh, then at that point now, I'd send this over into PixInsight for further processing, along with all the uh, affiliate links down below. Fantastic tools from uh, Russell Chrome, and you know the Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, Noise Exterminator. Um, I just can't process without them now. I love them too much. <laughs> they make me have more fun with my Astro Image, and that's what it's all about. And this program does that too. Uh, I really prefer stacking in this rather than in uh, weird batch preprocessing or DSS or, or Cyril or anything else really. It gels with me pretty well and I hope that this has been useful to some of you guys out there. So uh, I've gone on quite long enough. Hopefully this was a, a reasonable overview and you can get an idea of uh, just what my stacking looks like and maybe be able to follow along and uh, perform your own integrations. And... Uh, that's about it from me, guys. So thanks very much indeed. As always, I, you know, hand on heart, really do mean it. Your support means the absolute world to me. I couldn't do this without it. So genuinely, thank you. And uh, yeah, that's it. Anyway, look after yourselves, guys. I will see you in the next one. Uh, leave a comment if you can think of anything you really want me to cover. And maybe I will be able to get to it. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Clear skies. <laughs>